Welcome to our Midweek Connection. I'm Rev. Art Moore, and I'm the pastor at Centenary United Methodist Church in Louisiana, Missouri, and Clarksville United Methodist Church in Clarksville, Missouri. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. Well, today you can see that I brought a globe with me that gives a picture of the whole world. And I thought I would bring that today because did you know that today on Thursday, April 22nd, is Earth Day? Well, we need to be thankful to God for this opportunity to praise God for the goodness of His creation. What should we be thankful for? Oh, there are so many things, it is hard to focus on just a few, isn't it? But I'll just name a couple here. We can be thankful for the forests, the clear water that flows from the mountains, even the bald eagles that we have so many of them around here, and killer whales, the flowering shrubs that give beauty to in our neighborhoods with flashes of pink and yellow, you know, and there's a variety of human life and the rain that brings about all the beauty in the trees, the flowers, and shrubs. They need the rain to bloom in all of their glory. For all that we have and all that we are, we owe thanks to God. You know, God created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And although we believe man is special in God's world, we are merely a part of the creation placed here by God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of of life. And the man became a living being. Wow! Adam was created out of the dust of the earth. Now, how could there be any more of a relationship with the earth than to be created out of it? When God formed Adam, he was not a living being until God breathed life into his nostrils. And we became living human beings. The fact that we exist is as living, breathing human beings suggests that we have a relationship with the earth because we were created out of it. And we have a relationship with God because we breathe the very breath of the one who created all of this. Creation belongs to God. The land, the water, the animals, the air, all are gods. Have you ever seen a rainbow? They are beautiful, aren't they? It just takes my breath away every time I see one. No one who has seen them can possibly doubt God's love for us. A rainbow is God's promise to you and me, to all of us. In Genesis chapters nine, 6 through the chapter 9, it tells about Noah's Ark and the great flood. And then in Genesis chapter 9, verses 11 through 15, it says, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the entire world. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow, God said, in the clouds, 
and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember, God says, my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. How are we supposed to take care of this earth? You know, that's a good question. Fortunately, the Bible provides help. In Genesis, when God placed man in the garden and states, till it and keep it. This means we have the right to till the earth in order to make it fruitful. But does this mean that we are to till all of it? No, we also have the duty to keep it, which means to protect it, to keep the earth by conserving it. God speaks to me through the mountains, and he always has. When I go hiking, I see the beauty that God has created, and I feel his presence. And I just look at the different things out there, and oh, I just think, God made this just so that you and I can enjoy it. Perhaps for you, you feel closest to God, maybe at the beach or at a lake or some other place. But for me and perhaps for you, nature is the most real sign of God's presence. Our spiritual journey is still more a mystery to me than having a wonderful understanding of it all. But day by day, one step at a time, with God's help, the understanding grows. If we will take the time to listen for God's guidance and read God's holy word. Let's just take a moment now and pray. Let's fold our hands, bow our head, and close our eyes as we pray. Lord, we thank you for this occasion to think about your creation and our duty to be good stewards of these gifts. Help us to know that each of us has a key job in caring for the earth. By the choices we make and by the actions we take, give us good judgment to choose thoughtfully and to act with care, to show our love for you and your love of this good earth, our home. Amen. Well, I just want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you will take time to go out and enjoy God's creation, the whole world that is around us, on this wonderful day that we are sharing together. Now, may the Lord bless you.